Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video in this echoey bathroom. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, when I'm filming this, I'm currently in New Zealand in Christchurch. I've got a concert on tonight, how play the violin. This is the last concert in our big tour. We've been traveling for many weeks and this is the last one. And I thought, instead of just putting my makeup on, I thought I'd film it today because I have gotten into a really good routine with my concert makeup at the moment. I thought it'd be kind of a fun video to film for you guys. I haven't filmed like a concert makeup, get ready with me in a long time and it's obviously a look that's very easy to recreate if you've got a fancy event to go to or something or a date night or something it's just a very easy glam look i have just finished filming my skincare routine video as well while i've been here my travel skincare routine so if you haven't seen that video that will have come out before this um because this was a very impulsive video i didn't plan to film um, but it's going to help me have a little bit of extra content on the go when I get back. I'm going straight back into performing in an opera when I get back to Melbourne, so things are a bit crazy. I've just popped on a little bit of the L'Oreal Lumi Magique Primer. Love this stuff, and it gives such a nice glowy base. Not that I really needed any extra glow, but it's very pretty. And the foundation I'm using today is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10. Um, this is such a reliable foundation for performing. I find that it will stick around without any sort of primer or powder even. Like I don't need to use my hourglass primer to get it to last all day. It just holds up so well. So I use two pumps of that and I'm going in with my Juno Velvet Sponge, which I really like. Mine's getting a bit destroyed though. I'm gonna have to throw it out when I get home because I've used it for a few months now. And I just blend that in. Concealer, I've been loving my Tarte Shape Tape again. Um, this is in the shade Fair. I think I prefer Fair Neutral or Fair Beige as a shade, but this is just one that I had, so it's a little bit more on the warm side. Um, it's just nice and full coverage. Again, it doesn't crease, it like sticks around on its own, it doesn't really need any help from other products. So I'm just putting a little bit under my eyes. A lot under my eyes. I put a little bit down my nose because I tend to get quite red along there um, and I'm just putting a little bit here to cover up some of my acne scarring that is still sort of peeking through because I don't like to use too much foundation um, and the sponge does sheer it out a bit to be a bit more like a medium coverage. My skin's in such a good way at the moment like there's no breakouts at all but I've still got a bit of scarring from previous breakouts so just trying to cover those up. And yeah, I just feel like my nose always looks really red compared to the rest of my face if I don't put a bit of concealer on. And the Tarte Shape Tape makes a really good like eyeshadow base as well, so I tend to bring it right up over my eyelids. And that way you don't have to use eye primer or an eye base. And then I am just gonna set a little bit of my face, not the whole thing, but just sort of around my chin and jaw area where foundation does tend to rub off more quickly because of my violin. So I'm using the number seven. This is the Airbrush Away Translucent Finishing Powder. It's not really a setting powder per se, but um, it's just quite a lightweight sort of powder. It just takes away some of the shine. Sort of here. I'll keep that a little bit though because I like the way that looks when it's a bit glowy. And just put a little bit down here on my lower jaw, chin, and a little bit up here sort of along the sides of my nose and under my eyes but I don't do the top of my nose and then I'll just do the very perimeter of my face so I can blend my bronzer and stuff in a bit easier. For bronzer I've been using the Hourglass Metallic Strobe Lighting Kit so this is meant to be a highlighting palette. I use these two as a highlighter, I mix them and this one I use as a bronzer. It's so beautiful you've got fair skin. Unfortunately though, I don't think they sell this palette anymore. And I haven't seen these exact shades, the Lucent Strobe Light, I haven't seen that sold as a single. I really wish they would, because I would buy it in a heartbeat, because I'm running out of this one. I can nearly see the grid forming <laughs> on it, which means I've really thrashed it. And I love a glowy bronzer, because it just looks so healthy and beautiful and radiant. Um, and it blends in so much easier than a matte bronzer. I'm just using my Flower Beauty um, bronze brush as well. It's my favorite bronze brush at the moment. Go in with my Haku Hodo highlighting brush and take the two highlighting shades. You can see I've like, I'm hitting pan <laughs> in between them because that's where I mix the two shades. And I'll add this to the tops of my cheekbones. Might be a little bit much, but obviously like day to day, but for on stage, this just looks amazing. 
And then I like to put a little bit here between my eyes. I don't know why, but that looks so nice on the sort of bridge of my nose. And then lastly, Cupid's bow. Give yourself a little milk moustache. Then I'm gonna go in with my sponge again and just kind of go over all those areas where I just put the highlighter. And I sort of just mush it into my skin a bit more. Helps it to look a little bit more like an actual skin glow rather than just a shimmery eyeshadow like sitting on top of your skin. And then I'm gonna apply my blush last. Again, this is another trick to help your highlighter look a little bit more natural is actually to do it after bronzer but before blush. It helps it to sort of just look a little bit less sort of layered up. I don't know why, but the order makes a huge difference. I'm using a little mini of the NARS Orgasm Blush and my Surratt Beauty Blush Brush. And I will go pretty heavy on the blush because as I say, this is more stage makeup, so it really has to show up under lighting. And if you want to, you can also go over with a sponge to kind of mush that in a bit as well. For brows, I've been using the Archery Brow Pencil by Soap and Glory. The, what is this actually called? Brow Tint and Shaping Pencil. This is in the shade Brown. These are the little benefit tweezers. They're actually such good tweezers because they have a little brush on the other end. So if you bring a brow product with you that doesn't have a spoolie, like this one, and it's very handy. This might be quite difficult, I'm so far away from my mirror, but I've been using the pencil end, surprisingly, I didn't think I would like it or use it much, but I have been liking it. I use it mainly to fill in the bulk of the brow, sort of starting from the middle out, and like filling in, say, this real dead section here, which is just like missing so many hairs. Dead, that sounded very Kiwi, didn't it? I've gone like full Kiwi since being back in my homeland for three weeks. And then I'll take the other end, which is a little like brush tip, but I'll use this to draw in like little hairs at the front. It looks super, super natural. So you can see sort of the difference between them. Still a very, very natural brow, but a lot more shaped and perfected than this side. Really been loving it. It's a shame that I can't buy this product on my side of the world because I'm going to run out of it really fast. Then I'm gonna pop on a little bit of brow gel. I'm just using my favorite, the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I'm gonna pop on a little bit of nude liner onto my waterline. I'm using the Essence Extreme Lasting Eye Pencil in Silky Nude. So I'm just going to run a bit of that in here. For shadows, I've just been using two eyeshadows and then going in with eyeliner to kind of smudge out my lash line. They're both from NARS. They're the ones I use all the time, Kingston and Bali. So Kingston is a little bit more of a sort of contouring shade. It's so beautiful. A nice cool toned, mousy, sort of light brown. And then Bali is a little bit deeper, as you can see, but it's still quite cool and toned. So I start with Kingston, the lighter one, and a fluffy brush, mine's so stained. And we're just going to start blending out a bit of a crease. I'm using extremely light pressure. I think the biggest mistake with eyeshadow blending is that we push too hard, is what I've kind of discovered. So I try and use very light pressure, and I'm blending that all over my lid a bit as well. It's kind of just laying down a general base shade. Maybe I could even zoom you guys in. That might be better. Look at that. You can actually see what I'm doing, although now it's a bit short. So it's like a real tutorial where it's meant to be just a chatty get ready with me. Then I take that same brush and the colour Bali. Focus it right here on this outer part of the eye. Do little circular motions. I'm going to take a really small brush. This is the BH Cosmetics um, number 17. And just run a tiny bit of that same Bali shade under the lower lash line. And then I'm going to do the rest of my work with a black eyeliner and a pencil brush. So this eyeliner is the designer brand's Pigment Plus eyeliner in black. The first thing I'm going to tight line my upper waterline, which takes a little bit of practice. And then I'm just going to lightly apply some of this to the top lash line take my pencil brush and start just smudging it out. Don't worry if it's a little bit messy, because it's meant to be quite smoky. I'm just gonna have to get a little bit closer to the mirror to check that. <laughs> it's all completely matte, which I think looks really nice and contrasting against my very shiny skin. <laughs> then I'm just gonna apply some mascara. I'm using the Marcel Fortifying and Lengthening Mascara, which is very dry. It needs to be thrown out, but I'm just trying to get through this trip. 
but I love this mascara. It was good in its prime. It's definitely getting a little bit too dry now. Mascara's <laughs> dried. I've just put my hair up. This is how I've been wearing my hair for concerts too. It's very like cheerleader, but it's just nice to have it out of the way. Just up on a really high, slick pony. But yeah, it's kind of cool because it's sort of like a little bit casual, but then I'm wearing like a sequin gown. I don't know why, but I quite like the way that combination looks. But I'm going to put on some lashes. The lashes I've been loving, as you guys know, I've talked about them before, but I've worn this exact pair nine times. <laughs> it's amazing. They're the Quartz Beauty Jade Lashes. Now Quartz Beauty is actually a company that my gorgeous friend Crystal Conte created and she does lashes for sort of smaller eyes and they're actually amazing. They do really work well for smaller eyes or for people like me that don't love a huge lash. I just want something that just slightly enhances my natural lashes rather than it looking really obvious I'm wearing lashes. So these little ones are fantastic. Sorry, they're all like not attached to their little things. But as I said, I've worn these, worn this exact pair nine times, which is quite incredible because they just are lasting and lasting. They're such good quality. Um, so I'm just gonna apply some glue. I use the Ardell Lash Brush on Lash Adhesive. This one I really like because it's clear. You can apply it straight away. I find it holds my lashes so much better than the latex-based sort of white lash grip grips and stuff. Well, let's see if I can do this this far away from the mirror. Could be a struggle. Mm, might have to get up close. Let's move, you guys. See if we can film this. Kaplunk. Mm. Oh, it's a very flattering angle. You can see the difference between the lashes and the no lashes. It's so subtle, but it just really like elongates my eye out that way. I love these so much. And then for lips, uh, I've been doing a mixture of sometimes nude lip, sometimes a bright red. The red I've been using, you guys be so proud, <laughs> is my Lisa Aldridge um, Velvet Ribbon Lipstick. For the longest time I didn't use this because I was just, didn't want to ruin the beautiful velvet finish on it, um, but I went ahead and used it on this trip and it is amazing. It is such an incredible lip color. I haven't had a chance to try the other one, Velvet Jazz, yet, but I really like Velvet Ribbon. And then the nude lip I've been wearing is my Marc Jacobs Gloss in Sugar Sugar. I'm gonna put that on now because it's actually quite early in the day, like it's like midday, and our concert's not till the evening. I don't wanna walk around with three lips all day, so I'll show you what the gloss looks like now. And then later tonight, I think I'm gonna wear red. I have quite a big stage that we're playing on tonight, so, I want my lips to be like quite visible and nude just won't probably show up on this kind of environment. It's better for very small venues or like daytime concerts where the red felt a bit much. But yeah, that's what it looks like with nude, which is very wearable. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to grab some footage for you tonight of me with my red lip on. That is my concert makeup that I've been doing at the moment. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was very fun to film and very impulsive and I'm pleased I did it. That way I've been able to kind of capture, you know, what I've been doing over the last couple of months for my concert makeup. Very much time for me to go and get some lunch. I am feeling like the hunger shakes coming on. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll chat you guys in my next video. Bye!